In chapter 3, we start to look at chemical reactions. Reactions are chemical changes. And before we go any further, make sure that you have your notebook, a pencil, maybe a periodic table handy, and write down these notes as we go along. We're in chapter 3 of the Brown LeMay Burston chapter, or 13th edition text. Chapter 3, chemical reactions. As I said before, chemical reactions are also known as chemical changes. And instead of writing the word reaction all the time, many times we'll use the shorthand RxN for reaction, RxN. So in a chemical reaction, we write what are called chemical equations. There are reactants in the chemical equation on the left-hand side of an arrow. And then there are products on the right-hand side of the equation. Reactants are always on the left. Products are always on the right. Sometimes you'll see an arrow that goes both directions, but it still doesn't matter. These are the reactants and these are the products. For right now, we'll just see an arrow going to the right-hand side, and we still define the left-hand side as the reactants and the right-hand side as the products. The plus sign means reacts with or combines with, and the arrow means produces or yields or makes or forms. And one thing that's true about chemical reactions is they all must obey the law of conservation of mass. Law of conservation of mass is that matter is neither created nor destroyed. However much you have on this side of the reaction, you should also have on this side of the reaction. Well, let's take a little closer look at this particular reaction between hydrogen, oxygen, and water, and let's see if it obeys that law of conservation of mass. We're going to take a little atom inventory here, and underneath the arrow, we'll put the H down, and then we'll count how many H's are on this side of the reaction. There's a little 2 right down here, so that means there's two H's. There's a little 2 below this H, so that means there's two H's on this side. Over here on this side of the reaction, how many oxygens do we have? Well, we have a small two right here, so we have two oxygens right here. And then on the right-hand side, there's no number below this oxygen. And if there's no number written below something, we always assume that there are one of them. And so there's one oxygen here. Well, if you pause right now and take a look, you'll notice that we've broken the law of conservation of mass. There's there's four things over here, and there's only two, three over here. We've lost an oxygen atom from one side to the other. Well, to solve this problem, we do what's called balancing equations. In balancing equations, we want to make sure that these numbers match on each side. To balance equations, we use coefficients. And coefficients are numbers that go in front of each one of the species. Numbers that go in front right here, or in front right here, or in front right here. We can't write little numbers down below, because those are the composition of the substance in itself. But we can write numbers in front of. And if we end up putting a 2 in front of this h, we now have 4. And if we put a 2 in front of this h, we now have 4. This also distributes to this o right here. And now I have two o's. And I have a 1 in front of here, which I don't have to write, which means that there's a total of two o's there. And I now have a balanced chemical reaction. How did I do that? Well, it's mostly trial and error to start with. There are some like 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 techniques that we'll learn second semester for very meticulously balancing difficult things. But for right now, you have to be OK with a little bit of guess and check as far as what you put in front of each one of the species. Let's look at a little bit more difficult one right here. This is called ethane. Ethane burns when in the presence of air, because there's oxygen in air. And then when it burns, it gives you carbon dioxide and water. Let's take an atom inventory here, and let's look at our carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens on both sides. And let's see if we're obeying the law of conservation of mass. There's two carbons right here. And here on this side, there's only one. On this side, there's six hydrogens, because there's a little six down below the hydrogen. And there's a two below this hydrogen right here. There's a two below this oxygen. And over here, there's two oxygens here and one oxygen here. So there's three oxygens right here. Well, we've got a lot of messed up parts here. Nothing really matches. And so where to start? Well, with these particular ones in these combustion or burning reactions, I always recommend doing them alphabetically. Alphabetically meaning do the carbons first, then the hydrogen second, the oxygen third, just because that's the order they come in in an alphabet. 
Do you have to? No. It just turns out that those are the easiest. So there's two carbons here. So let's put a two in front of here to give us two carbons. And then since I put the two here, remember that distributes over to this oxygen. So now I have four plus one or five oxygen atoms on the right hand side of the equation. More messed up than it was before. But no fear, let's check out the hydrogens now. We have six hydrogens right here, so I have to have a total of six on this side. So let's try a three right here. Three times two is six total. So now we have six hydrogens here and six hydrogens right here. And then over here on this side, we have two oxygens and we have a total of four, five oxygens. Hmm, what times two gives me five? Well, there's no real whole number that's going to give me that, but if I multiply this by two and a half, two times two and a half would give me five. Well, it's okay to use halves to start to figure it out, but then multiply them to get whole numbers as needed or as you can. So, for example, I could take this entire equation right here and I could multiply it by two and distribute this two into each one of these and then I would have whole numbers for each one of them. So it's okay to use a half or a third or a quarter if you need to, but then in the end, once you know it's balanced, two, two, six, six, uh, well, this would be five then, five and five, now multiply everything by two because you'll get rid of a half. So I'd end up with two C2H6 plus five H2, uh, uh, O2s goes to two times two is four CO2 and then two times three or uh, six H2Os over here on the right hand side. And then I'd have a balanced chemical equation with whole number coefficients. You can fudge on this a little bit. You can leave it in halves. Uh, the picky time that it'll happen is in some test questions, and then when we get to chapter five, you'll have to use halves sometimes as well. Many times in chemical equation, we use uh, symbols to indicate the states of matter. For example, ethane is usually a gas at room temperature. Oxygen is usually a gas at room temperature. Carbon dioxide is usually a gas at room temperature. Water is usually a liquid at room temperature. And so we use those symbols to symbolize solid, liquid, gas, and AQ for aqueous. They're not necessary for helping us balance a reaction, but many times you see them in an equation. And especially when we get into chapter four, we'll look for things that form solids out of aqueous solutions. Also, every once in a while, you'll see a little triangle over the top of an arrow. That just means that you added heat to the reaction or you did something to the reaction to cause it to occur. That's a good little intro to chemical reactions and balancing them and following the law of conservation of mass.